All right, here we go. Hey, uh, this is uh, Wes. I am here with Frank Aruas, who is my boss and owner of Blind Appeal. Uh, this is our podcast number three for Treasure Valley Max Media. Uh, if you're watching live here on Instagram, I've got a live feed here. We'll post it later. We'll post this up on Spotify and iTunes so you can watch it. Um, but anyway, uh, here is Frank Aruas. Howdy. So, How are you doing? I'm doing great. Sorry. <laughs> good, good. It is what it is. Hey, we're yeah. uh, we're working pretty hard on this podcast thing. Kyle and I are kind of trying to split it a little bit because our schedules don't mesh as much. So you're going to hear a podcast from me. You're going to hear one from Kyle. We're going to interview local business people in the Treasure Valley. Uh, if you do want to do that, hit me in the DMs on Instagram or anywhere you follow me on social media. Um, one of the things that we've got here is this is going to be the first interview with someone you've listened to interview about who I am, who Kyle is. You know that I work for this company called Blind Appeal, um, and I sell window coverings. I'm one of Frank's salesmen. Frank is my boss. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to start with Frank was because I have a lot of, um, I can't even think of the word right now, but admiration <laughs> for Frank because he's, he's an entrepreneur. And we talk about that. He's a businessman, a businessman that... Uh, has come a long way. He's been doing some. He's been selling blinds for a while, but he's also come from a lot of different places. And he gets through adversity. He's working his butt off, and um, it's really cool to see how that goes. And those are kind of people that we want to put on our podcast and show kind of the Treasure Valley who we are. So, uh, with that said, uh, here we go. We're going to get right into it, and um, we're going to start with asking Frank, you know, kind of who he is and where he came from. And we'll get to know him a little bit better on a level, on a better level, and then we'll start talking about the company and what we do. So, Frank, um, yeah. welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Obviously, you already said Appreciate hi, but it. we're going to keep going. Yeah. So, um, can you go ahead and tell us just a little bit of your history about who you are, where you grew up, all those, all those types of things? You bet. So, uh, appreciate you having me here. I think this is cool. Yeah, it's Before pretty exciting. Before we start, I want to just say, Wes, you, um, I've been so impressed with how much time and effort you put into not only your job with Blind Appeal, we couldn't be happier to have you, but um, just doing this, the social media stuff, the, uh, you really stepped out on a limb and put yourself out there, so well, I, res I respect the heck out of you for that. So I appreciate you. that. It means a lot to us. It's been as pretty a fun as a, as a whole, and I appreciate you working with me and allowing me to do some of these things that are pretty enjoyable yeah. to me, so yeah. that's awesome. I also want to point out, secondly, although San Francisco is a bigger banner back here, we got LA, and that's going to give you somewhat of a hint of where I'm at. I'm from, but uh, we kind of one of the things I'm going to stop you right there because uh, <laughs> there's a big elephant in the room. You see that big oh, yeah. SF over there? You know, I mean, it's kind of a dynasty. I'm trying to remember the last time that Blue Hats won any championship. But anyway, go ahead. It was in my lifetime. I'll tell you that much <laughs> yeah. for sure. So. 1988 to be exact. Oh dang, it was in my lifetime I too. I don't remember when the Giants were on the World Series last though. Oh, that was only what? Let's see here. Three minute, years ago, yeah. four years ago. <laughs> Anywho, uh, back to me, right? All right. No, um, so, yeah, I, uh, I grew up in uh, Southern California. I, um, my dad was a Baptist preacher, so we kind of moved around a lot, different churches that he preached at. Uh, when I was a little kid, we lived in Joshua Tree, California, which is right outside of uh, the Joshua Tree National Monument, which is a super cool place. So I, I grew up climbing rocks and playing in the desert and building forts with cactus trees and all that stuff. Pretty sure that's a Pearl Jam song, too, so that's pretty cool. I, I heard that, yeah. <laughs> so, cool place to be, yeah. snakes, uh, oh. you know, tarantulas, scorpions. So, they didn't freak me out so much then. I don't know why they do now, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so that was a cool place to grow up. I was only there until I was seven years old, but then uh, you know, I moved around Southern California quite a bit. Um, down there uh, in my childhood, I was basically just as, you know, like every kid, boy, girl, whatever, uh, especially boys, I guess. Um, I was a super just sports fanatic. Yeah. Obviously, I wanted to play on the Dodgers my whole life. I knew I would because I was so good, right? Yeah. Like, every, like, <laughs> like every little thinks, kid, they yeah. all know how good they are. But, uh, I mean, I'd spend hours just throwing the tennis ball against the wall and playing full nine inning games, you know, with just my, me, myself, and I. And, uh, you know, that was basically what my childhood, uh, what what I was obsessed over. I mean, I'd listen to Vin Scully doing Dodger games oh, yeah. all through junior high, keeping score, all that stuff. So 
a lot of good memories there. Um, I my first working experience was well, I did a paper route when I was pretty young, but then that was uh, a big thing back in that back in those times. Yeah, that I'm not saying they have old, papers anymore. Yeah, they they do, but they don't deliver. You don't see them. paper guys yeah. running around on their bikes these days. So uh, I did that when I was maybe 14, 15, and then. Uh, my first job was working at a place called Campus Crusade for Christ, which was yeah. where their headquarters was in San Bernardino, California, in the Mount Foothills there. And I uh, worked on the grounds, climbing palm trees, trimming trees, and stuff like that. Um, and then once I got through high school, uh, my first real job, career I should say, was working for Vaughn's Grocery Company, okay. where I was, uh, I was assistant manager for quite some time. I worked there seven years. But when I knew it wasn't the right job for me was when uh, I used to run a night crew. Uh, we would stock shelves all night, things like that, turn the radio, blast it up all night, and just, <laughs> just the animals throwing product on the shelves. And uh, one morning, uh, our district manager came into the store, and we weren't done yet. Like, the store was opening, and we still had some boxes on the floor, and we are trying to get everything cleaned up. He, he pulled me aside and said, Frank, you know, if... Uh, if your crew isn't afraid of you, then you're not doing the job you're supposed to do. And right then, like if they don't like you, he said, right. basically. That makes a lot and, of sense. Uh, when that. he had said that, I thought, well, that is odd because all I want people to do is to like me. <laughs> I want to get along. I want them to respect me, of course, but I also want them to appreciate, you know, know that I appreciate them. Um, they're working hard, I, you know. So anyway, that's when I realized that that, probably wouldn't be a career because it's kind of the mindset back then yeah and I kind of want to I'm sorry to interrupt no, I mean cool. I'm going to interrupt but I just want to say that that's one of the things that I really like about working for you is that I know that I'm appreciated and I think that as far as that goes with like a good employer that's something that they do they make sure that right. they know you don't have to rule with fear people right. don't have to be afraid that their job is going to be gone all the time and so I'm I think that's awesome that you recognize that that people but that didn't matter. That was yeah. something that needed to be handled that way. I think back then that was much more prevalent than now. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm sure it still is that way just in some companies now. But back then that was pretty common. You know, it was kind of like a, a rule bought by just being Mr. Authority and things like that. Right. And I think that so. people need to understand that that's not really, that's not really the, you can, you can be a boss and you can teach people to do things and you can allow them to do things to make the company better or do whatever you're doing better without being a dictator. You oh, exactly. I mean? you, you got to tell them how to do it's it. It's counterproductive. Yeah, really. right. It kind of ruins relationships and, and you want your employees to be happy. And one of the things that we always talk about, like me working at Les Schwab, was they wanted to make sure that you knew every part of the job. And so mm -hmm. I was always the person who was showing someone how to do something because the more that your employees know, it's not like right. they're going to take your job away. They're just more educated on what the process yeah. is and they can be a better employee and respect you more. No doubt. Yeah, I think that's where um, what you need to do is create a culture. We try to do this is in that, um, you know, I know some some managers, some owners, whatnot, they're a little intimidated by people that might be better than them right. at certain things. So they, they don't want to be shown up or whatnot. Um, I have a complete opposite philosophy. It's like I want everybody to work for me, with me, to be better than me in, in some ways, because obviously I can't, I don't do everything. Right. I don't do everything well or perfect. And uh, you know, each person in our company, I truly believe each person in our company does a much better job than I would do in their same role. So yeah. um, that's the kind of people I think that, um, I think that's why we're lucky as a company. We have super people, you know, in, in all areas. And that's not but, easy to do either. That's not easy to find. I mean, and it hasn't always been that way, but yeah, we're definitely at a spot now where uh, I think we have the best people on the planet, yeah. sincerely. I'd say we but, got a pretty good group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyway, so we were we were at where we're at the grocery store. Grocery store, uh, and then that's about when I started having. So my first son, Sean, he was born in 1984. Um, I worked at Bonds until 1986, I believe it was, and then I had we had Justin youngest son uh, just two boys and then um, I went from bonds and then I got a job with Frito-Lay where I started out on a route sales job where I would just call you know I'd, I'd be in a fifth wheel truck with all the product 
and uh, sell at the store level, build displays, fill the shelves, all that stuff. Uh, that was my first real sales job in a way because my job was to gain space in the stores and to talk to the store managers and tell them why they should be selling our product. Right. Um, you know, obviously Salty Snacks is a very impulse product, so <laughs> you want to get it out in as many locations in the store as you can. Get it on the end of the row. <laughs> so that was the first time I really thought, you know, I didn't, I never really thought of myself as a sales guy, but um, that's what I was doing without really, really thinking too much about it. Um, and why I did that was because it, the more I sold, the more I made. Right. So, you know, I was very, very motivated to, uh, to be successful at and make as much money as I can for my young family and feed ourselves. Um, I mean, back then I was working, literally I'd start my route about two, three in the morning, get home about three in the afternoon. And uh, it was just always on, just working my tail off. And my wife used to joke thinking, you know, I looked like I had cancer because I was just oh, burning so yeah. many calories all the time. <laughs> I was as skinny as a rail. But uh, anyway, so I did that for a couple years and then they, they promoted me to a district manager. So I was over a, a few route salespeople. Uh, so that was fun. That's my first experience with really managing people. Right. And uh, you know, that's where I first learned how, I guess, uh, how to motivate people, how not to motivate people. I mean, a lot of it was trial by error because I had never done it before. Yeah. And uh, you know, my first, my first thing was because I, I was managing people that I worked with, I was a peer with for quite some time. So I wanted to continue to be their friends right. and have them like me. So it was really a difficult transition to to kind of keep a balance between them respecting me, but still, uh, you know, I guess not it's liking fine, me per se. Yeah, but it's a fine line to walk. I mean, it's interesting how, and I talk about this a lot in a lot of the videos that I do, but how you can you can manage different people different ways and you may take a different train towards me like you may be able to yell at right, me but right. you can't yell at someone else in the company so true. or or you you know you just you have to know what's the best way to motivate them and i think that that's part of what you get with just experience just right. doing the job yeah, just trying to figure out a way to motivate them absolutely yeah everybody responds completely different but you can you can tell one person 100 positive things and then just give them a little constructive criticism and it just kills them. Right. Other people, all they want to hear is constructive criticism because they, they just want to get better and better. So it's, right. it's different with every personality, but um, just gonna kind of learn through that. Yeah. Um, but then uh, after that, for a couple of years, then I got into, they promoted me to, they call it a region sales manager, which basically at that time I was calling on headquarters of like grocery chains, uh, I also called on Costco in the Southern California division. Um, I was on the Walmart team, so we went to Bentonville, uh, Arkansas a few times. And so basically just a lot of traveling around and um, just selling at the top level, trying to build relationships with, with the higher levels of different uh, organizations. Right. And uh, back then it was a lot different too because nowadays they're much stricter. You know, the IRS and everything is pretty corporations can't do as much uh, you know back then the, the culture was uh, you basically sold and build relationships by taking people places like taking them golfing or right, taking right. them to Laker games or uh, whatever um, you know so that was that's a lot of my job which was really awesome it's a lot of fun um, and basically back then it wasn't necessarily a tough sales thing it was just building a good rapport with people um, kind of you do this for us and we'll do this for you kind of thing. Right. Um, we wouldn't say that, but that's really what it was. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know? that's what you got to do sometimes to yeah. make sure that people know that you appreciate them. You know? Right. I mean, it's just the way it works. <laughs> yeah. But that's where I learned that, uh, you know, it's very competitive. Salty snacks industry is very competitive, even, even though Frito-Lay is by far the, the number one company on the planet for that. Um, locally and regionally, there's a lot of competition. So... Uh, and a lot of you know a lot of people we called on didn't want free to lay to be dominant. They wanted to give the little guys a chance, which right. is which is fantastic. I mean, competition is super. Um, so that's you know that's where I basically learned more so on how to um, really take care of the customer. It's like I had to prove that we would take better care of them. I right. had to prove that you know I wanted success for their business 
more than I want a success for me. Obviously, the, that would follow. But, yeah, hand in hand. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of where uh, where my philosophy is nowadays, and, and I think yours is exactly the same. I've seen it in you. You want to just take care of the customer and do do the right thing for them, right? Regardless of if it's the right thing or not for you, because you know in the long term that's going to get you. Yeah, it, it leads into making you know a, a lifetime customer versus a one-time customer. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, so that after that, free delay kind of led into uh, a little bit of a move, correct? Yeah. So my dad, who I mentioned earlier was a Baptist preacher, he actually moved up here. Uh, First Baptist of Boise uh, called him up here to be their pastor in 1984. Uh -huh. So we've been coming up here since 1984, back and forth quite a bit, and we always really enjoyed it up here. But uh, you know, we just had our own lives down there and all that. But then in uh, 2000, we ended up uh, moving up here. Uh, I didn't have a job. Uh, we uh, I actually sold real estate for a little bit before uh, coming up here. But then we came up here. I had different jobs that I just couldn't really stand because I was always used to being out and about, you know, outside sales type right. of jobs. And then I came up here, I just couldn't find a good outside sales job. So I started off, first job was sitting in a cubicle all day, calling, oh. trying to sell businesses, <laughs> local businesses, computer training. Yeah. And trying to get them to use our company to train their employees on computers. Um, that was very challenging. Sounds like and a lot of fun. It's one of those things where sometimes <laughs> I'd be sitting in the cubicle just just you know regretting that the only way I can get out of this is to call the next number and um, I just thought to me, what have I done in my life to, to, to be here now? To deserve this. You know, go from <laughs> something I totally love to, to this. It was really tough. It was very humbling, um, which I must say was not a bad thing for me because I know in the past... Um, I've definitely had issues with pride, with thinking I was all that in my oh, 30s. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was pretty ugly, actually. You know, I, would, I, I wouldn't be as humble as I needed to be. So I think God really used me coming up here, bringing my family up here. It was tough on them, too. Um, and then me not having a really good career or job. And then I, you know, I, I left that job. I, then I sold accounting software, same way, inside sales. Oh, man doing online demos with companies around the country and things like that. Um, then I sold copiers and printers. None of those did I like so much. So bottom line is, and how I got to this today, uh -huh. Blind Appeal, is I had a buddy in 2006 that offered, um, gave me the chance to work with him. And he was in the drapery uh, blind business. He had his own company, he's kind of an ear interior design type of company. Okay. Um, so he asked me to help him out, or I asked him if he needed help, <laughs> honestly. And uh, so I worked with him for about a year learning this industry, learning about, you know, soft goods like draperies and that kind of thing. That's draperies? Where, that's one of that's our where favorites, he was, though. How, uh, how, <laughs> I know. How, uh, I think I learned to hate them so much because <laughs> I installed so many of them. In that we year. do sell them still, though. We so do. Don't, even though they're not very fun... We do sell them. And so. we do a great... We have Alvina, who does a phenomenal yeah, she's job. She's awesome. <laughs> Our installers are fantastic. I wasn't so great at it. Um, so that's where I learned that. I learned just how to sell blinds, install blinds. I basically installed for him more, more than anything else. Um, and then I, after about a year, they uh, that business was closing down. So I decided to... Uh, you know, I was too old. I was 45 at the time. I thought, there's no way I'm going to go out there... And try to get another job. I just was not in the mood at that stage of my life yeah. to go through interviewing, to just searching for jobs and trying to prove myself again. So, this is the first time in my life I actually really thought about I'm going to do something on my own. Because mm -hmm. um, the blind business, fortunately, there's there's a plus and a minus to it. The plus is it's really easy to start a blind business. It doesn't take a lot of money. Um, you can just have a vehicle, purchase some sample books set up a few accounts and start knocking on doors or start, right. start doing clothes. So it, it's a pretty simple business to begin, uh, which is very positive, which is what I needed at the time. I didn't have any money or anything. So yeah. it was a perfect thing for me to get going. And this was in 2007. Uh, 2007, the, the, the uh, economy was, was good. I mean, right. housing here in this market was really well. I, I thought 
again, you know, pride snuck in on me, and I thought, man, I'm pretty darn good at this because the first year or so was really, uh, we did really well. It's really busy. Um, but then 2008, 2009, we all know what happened. The, the, everything crashed, and you know, you saw empty houses uh, halfway built that were just the builders walked away from, and all of a sudden there was, you know, 20 buying companies in town trying to get one job, you know, one house that might yeah. be available. It was just It'd a really, really tough competitive. Time. I remember, and this is no joke, I remember a handful of times I actually called my own phone to see if it was working, because it was <laughs> not working. No so, one was calling me. It was horrible. Th there were cell phones at this time, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, there were cell phones. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know that they had them in 2000, because that's when I first there got one. There were phones, yeah, too, though. Yeah. There was, actually. Some yeah. people still have those. What are they thinking? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's interesting. Yeah. But, uh, anyhow, so fast forward to now, um, you know, our, our company consists of, well, my two, two sons were the first people that worked with us, with me, and then... Um, over time, we've just grown over the last 12 years, and now we have, I think it's right at 16 people right now. Mm -hmm. About half of us are family, family, like my sons, my sister, my wife, my nephews, um, my brother-in-law, and then we have um, the other half of the company is basically people that our family has known. So they're really like family. I mean, they're either friends of the family or people we've known along the way. So uh, I even, I, you know, I feel like our whole company, and this may sound cheesy, but I sincerely feel like our whole fan, our whole business is family. Yeah. Like, truly, uh, I truly feel that way. I mean, I, I've never been happier uh, than right now with, with the people we have. I think everybody cares a lot. Everybody uh, puts in a lot of effort and cares for the customer more, most importantly, so. Yeah, and I, that's kind of the way I feel about it, too. I haven't seen anything that we've done that I wouldn't be proud to do, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that we... It's it's interesting, although I'm not... Like, I don't share the name, and I'm, I'm a friend. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've known Mike, your nephew, for a very long time, and, and uh, always thought he was a good person, and it just kind of radiates through the whole family. So, you know, that's a, it's a, it's yeah. a good way to go. Um, so that's a little bit about the company. So what, what's, what would you say the main difference between what's the benefits of buying from Blind Appeal versus buying from some other company? Because there's lots of them. Yeah, right? yeah. What do we offer that they don't? Why would it be um, behoove someone to buy something from us? You know, that's a good question because obviously every company asks themselves that. Like, what? how do we stand apart? And we're in an industry where there's a lot of good competition here. Like right. there's a lot of really good blind companies in town that I have nothing but, but admiration for. I mean, they, there's some folks that have done a really good job. Um, so without me saying anything bad about anyone else, cause it really, there isn't a lot to say. There's a lot of great people, but, um, I feel, I think the, the unique thing about us, I believe, and I, I, I can't say for sure, but I believe we're the only company that actually has so much family and friends. It's like, it's the feel of we all truly love each other. Like there's no, there's no animosity in the company. There's just a lot of really good vibe. Uh -huh. And I think that that expresses itself out to the, to the customer. Right. I know that, you know, in every aspect, I think from our office gals, we had three office gals, my sister, Katie and Brooke. Those three gals are the first people that customers talk to when they call in. I just think, man, every, all three of them have just a super personality. They're very professional. They're very buttoned down. Yep. Uh, very responsive. Um, if anyone calls in either for a new appointment or, or with an issue, they're on it until things get taken care of. They, so, they are on they it. Are, I you can, know. I know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been part of that situation a few times. So. They're very tenacious. They're on uh, top of it, so it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so they're fantastic. And then our, our, uh, our install team, we have four installers, uh, Cameron, Skyler, John, and Dustin. And I tell you what, I can't imagine a company having, not only in the Treasure Valley, but in the, in the country, having more skilled uh, installers, more personable, more professional. Um, they're just good all around guys that do a phenomenal job. And uh, we couldn't always say that. We haven't always had the superstar Installers, we've uh, we've always had um, 
you know, people we've appreciated, but some people that just wasn't the right fit. But right, right now, uh, you know, our guys, they're great with motorization. Uh, their skill level, I, I believe, is much higher than the average. Um, so that we really don't have to say no to any customer yeah. for any particular reason. We do a lot of exterior shades that tie in with home automation and um, just a lot of motorized shades and things like that that takes a certain skill level that uh, I, I believe our guys are second to none. So Yeah, and I don't think, I, like with the installers, as far as it goes, like we very rarely see them. We, we hear from them when we make a mistake just because they want to make sure that we don't do that again. Hmm. But, you know, I, I call them from time to time too because when you have a question, that's you want to make sure that it's correct, but they are... They they know they're very knowledgeable. Even yeah. even our you know even Dustin who's been there for what seven eight months now yeah. is that's just He's phenomenal. Yeah, we phenomenal. just have these these great guys. You know, John and Skyler have been doing it forever, and um, you know, yeah. Mike is what, what what is his? He's pretty much quality control, right? Well, Mike is considered he's like the director of operations okay. guy. So he runs the whole install crew. Um, he goes out a lot. If customer has issues. He's the one that goes out there gets them taken care of, which has really helped because we actually have a guy dedicated to, if there are issues, blinds break, of course, yeah. over time, cords break, whatever. Um, Mike is the guy that, that goes out there m the majority of the time and either fix them on the spot or you get, know, it, taken get, care of. get it taken care of. Yeah. Um, he also manages the install guys and he, you know, he very, he's very relatable to them. Yeah. He's just a super guy. I mean, he's as dedicated to the company of, as anyone. Just does a super job. Um, it's really, it's it's really funny. Like it may sound like it's cliche or something, but honestly, this is this is the company we work for. This is the way that it is. These people are just awesome, and that's yeah. what we have. That's what we have known. And not to not to not mention other. I think I, uh, so. Sean, he's my son. He yep. runs the whole warehouse, so he receives all the product. He's the one that if if you're getting product scheduled uh, to be installed, so forth. He's the one you always talk to. He's yeah. If we uh, sell something. So, we say Sean's name every single yeah, day because yeah. he's the one who, who's going to get a hold of you and make sure that that gets put in there as soon as it shows up. Yeah, and he has to. Yeah, he deals with a lot of product. Does a great job. Then our sales force, of course, uh, Wes and Ryan, Nicole. Again, I think just super people. Even you, every once in a while. Me right? Once in a while, I, <laughs> I try not to scare people away. But, uh, yeah, we just have a great, great, great team. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's you know, that's like I said, I've I've been talking about it for a while. How how I love working for the company because I think it's just it's, I've done a lot of things. You know, I've even though I'm only 39, I've you know I worked at Les Schwab for 11 years. I was a teacher. I've got two degrees. I've I've done a couple different things. You know, other than that, I mean, all my high school jobs and stuff. But this is one of those things where it was like I knew when I was taking this step out of education into a, like a family owned business it was it was scary at first mm -hmm. but it's been awesome because it's you guys care and I think that that's the biggest thing that we have is that people care about what's going on so um, so before you go farther so two people I just realized so oh, Tom my oh yeah -in Tom Tomas he retired from the PO uh, out in Oregon he's a PO he retired he started working of course last October and he's the guy that organizes all their, if there's any remakes needing to be done. He also go out and do temporary shades. Yep. We offer free temporary shades. So anytime you buy blinds from us, uh, yeah, obviously you have to wait a few weeks so we can uh, put up temporary shades for free. He does most of those. And then my wife, Wendy. Oh yeah, uh, Wendy, yep. She handles kind of the Costco. We do Costco. Um, any Costco members that want to buy blinds through Costco in the Treasure Valley, <laughs> excuse me, uh, we handle those, and Wendy kind of manages that portion of the business, and our Costco business just keeps growing every year. So, yeah, hopefully we didn't I forget anyone. I think that's everybody. But. Yeah. Well, one of the things that leading into Wendy, because not only does she do, do that, she does something else mm -hmm. that every day, for the most part, when we don't have a road show or something like that, she's also doing something else. And part of this podcast is we're talking about mm -hmm. marketing. It's called Treasure Valley Max Media, and and Kyle and I. When we started this, what it was was we want to help people with their social media marketing. And so it started out by me doing that myself, trying to create business for myself. And I saw this area where I could work on. So now I'm basically podcasting, Instagramming, Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok. I mean, there's all these things. And if you're first to arrive on that, it really helps 
you to reach a larger audience. Um, and so when I first started with the company, we had a little bit of a time where I didn't have a couple days where I was just kind of concerned because not being a commission salesman, never being that, not knowing that I'm having to rely on pretty much myself to make things happen. And the company does give us leads as a salesman, but we also have to try and find ours and cultivate relationships with other people as well so that they continually refer us um, as a salesman, not just a company. And um, so I had a concern with Frank and I talked to him a little bit about social media marketing and and I got in with one of my friends and he, Frank actually helped me the first two months pay for that marketing to get it started. And it was basically on Facebook. I took it to this other level and um, moved it to everything else that I've been doing and pushing that a little bit harder because it, it got a little slow again and I was concerned and I thought, hey, you know, I need to figure out a way to generate some direct leads. So I started doing that. Um, but one of the things that Frank had always done, in, in, which leads into this, is what Wendy does. And that is, why don't you go ahead and tell us what Wendy does every single day, you know, right. how that list goes and how we, how we go through that. So one of the things is very, very time consuming, but one of the ways we've gotten a lot of business over the years is we've actually, and this is how I started really, how I got business from nothing to start and get business, was we have um, some really nice flyers and um, we actually advertise in a magazine, Eagle and Greenbelt magazine. We put the flyers inside that where our ad is and then we get a list of all the houses that are sold. As soon as they close, we get a list like within a day or two or when they close. So Wendy is the main person that literally drives to each house and drops off the magazine so the customer has something to read it's not just a flyer um, it's something that actually has value to them whether or not they want to buy blinds from us right um, so they have a really nice magazine to go through but she'll actually drop those off sometimes she'll talk to the people if she sees them but you know we don't knock on doors or anything like that but um, yeah a lot of times we'll roll up and, and a salesman sometimes we do this as well hand out flyers when Wendy is you know at a road show or busy or sometimes like that but um, the customer is moving in and the last thing they want to do is talk to anyone at that right. time so you're right. kind of like hey here's your flyer or here's here's a magazine if you need anything just let us know and then we exactly. kind of leave we don't really want to disturb them while they're moving in because that's that's a pretty crazy right. time exactly. but yeah exactly. I mean, and that's part of it but um, mm -hmm. so that work that works really well it worked really well when you first started um, it helps us we get how many quite a bit of leads from that we right? probably get 10 appointments a month or so that way and then we also uh, realtor and builder referrals right that's another big part of what uh, we had focused on over the years is building those relationships with who are the realtors that actually sell these houses that we want to do blinds in right. who are the builders building these homes um, so we put a lot of focus on building those relationships as well but you have brought me into this century <laughs> or this decade, uh, so I'll let you talk a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think that over and over we've talked about this, and I think we talk about it once or twice a week about like what we can do to promote the company within social media because um, really what it's about is getting getting our face in your mind because you may not need window coverings today. You may need them in, in a month. You may need them in a year, but if you see me or if you see Frank or if you see blind appeal, that's why we advertise on our trucks. That's why our trucks are covered in our, in our logo and everything like that. But, um, one of the things that I have been doing myself is I have my own, I have my own Instagram account, my own stuff. And it's West at blind appeal, which, you know, that may change in the future, but it's still me. I'm still doing the same thing. Um, as far as like what the name is, that doesn't mean that it's not me. And so, we're basically trying to brand the company, trying to brand, you know, the salesman, trying to get you to choose us over everyone else. And so I kind of talked to Frank about it a little bit and um, I've been really hammering it really hard and we're working on, we're working towards doing it more as social media because we can reach, you know, I have almost 12,000 followers. It's getting pretty close. Um, I mean, 1200, sorry, not 12,000. That'd be awesome. I'll get there someday, but I almost 1200 followers. So I can reach 1,200 people with this podcast. I can reach 1,200 people with this live video that we're doing on Instagram. Um, I post it to my Facebook page, all that stuff. So we can reach people that way versus, you know, handing out, what, maybe 20 flyers a day? Oh, so, yeah. so we hit 20 a day, and if we're advertising on Instagram four or five times a day, then we've hit 1,200 people four or five times a day. So 
um, just keeping that in your mind. And so we're working on that. And um, as a company, we're working towards doing that more and being more and more, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think that one of the things that, you know, I was, I was hesitant at first uh, because I didn't, I, I wasn't really, um, I guess, exposed to it too much. Right. You know, we, we would post on, we have a Facebook page, uh, we have an Instagram um, right now account and all that, and, and we post, but we don't do it probably as often as we should or, or the way we should. So that's uh, why it's been great to see you and all the, you know, all the things you've worked through, all the things you've learned. We're actually meeting this week to kind of go through a lot more of that to try to try to see how, how can we capitalize it more. Right. You know, we want to... We want to introduce all these people I talked about earlier. We want to introduce each one of them to to our audience to to make to, to have our community and our, our customers know who it is they're buying from, who who is our company. Right. Um, because as you've said many many times, and most of us in sales know that people aren't buying from Blind Appeal. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're buying from the people that they're meeting with, either salesperson. I mean that that's. That's who they're actually getting to know. So, and I've have said that a lot of times. And I know you have, and I'm just going to kind of put yeah. this out there. But um, I've said that. Um, sorry, um, I've <laughs> said that. Well, sorry, my I'll pick up a stand up for a second here. My Instagram wants to tell me that I've been on there a long time today. So um, anyway, there we go. Back at it. Um, it's uh it's one of those things where I walk into a house because a lot of times now you're doing way less selling, selling than what you have been, but we get your repeat customers. How's Frank doing? You know, anytime you talk, you say blind appeal, Frank is who it is and that's who they remember. And that's who, that's who they go to. Um, we're trying to get as salesmen, the three of us, we're trying to get realtors to refer us by name because we make a little bit more money that way. And that's what we want. But we also want you to know who we are. And so in order to make that happen, we have to make that lasting impression. And um, I've heard multiple times about me that, hey, that guy's on there all the time. I see that guy everywhere. Right, right. And um, that's the impression that I'm trying to make. That's what we want to do as a company as well. Because when you think of window coverings, we want you to think of us. I mean, and that's what we're trying to do. So That's the only reason we're alive right now. Yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> it is really. It's, it's, it's like how yeah. is that? It makes it makes us, but it makes our living, and that's yeah, absolutely. And it and it's not about just making money; it's about giving you the best product, the best service, and everything else as well. Making the money helps, right? But mm -hmm. we don't make money if we don't help you, and so that's really kind right. of what it boils down to. Right. So, um, but yeah, so we're working a little bit more towards that, and that's kind of where this is. This whole thing has led to this podcast is great. I always wanted to have Frank on here first because. I think about it listening to like Gary Vee and listening to some other people that I listen to. They talk about entrepreneurs and, you know, I don't necessarily know that I put myself in that, you know, like category because I'm not really a businessman per se. I, I mean, I have aspirations to be. I have aspirations to own my own company and do things like that. But looking for, for a person who does that and that's really what you are. I mean, you, you created this business, you've cultivated it, you've, it's, it's there because of you. It started out as you by yourself selling and then installing. And, uh, you know, I can't say that, well, I guess I installed two shades, but I mean, I haven't installed a lot. I could do it. <laughs> I mean, it's right. not, I mean, I changed tires for 11 years. I'm, I'm a mechanical right. person. I'm a hard worker. I know that I could do it, but I believe that anyone can do anything if they put their mind to it and they work hard. So right. that's kind of where... It's that we've worked really hard to do it. It's well, and, you know, and all, all truthful is, I, I picture you as an entrepreneur because you've taken the sales job as a way to. I mean, you've taken it on as your own business. Yeah. I mean, the way you're marketing yourself, all these things that you're doing, is uh, is is like you're doing it but as your own business. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're building your brand. You're building your business. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very much like. Yeah. I look at it as entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's such a hard <laughs> word to say, isn't it? It's like, it's hard putting that in your vocab because yeah. it is really what it is, but it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's fun. Hey, I want to shout out one more person real quick. Sorry. Go for it. You're on it. Justin, my other son, he worked for me for years and years. He just left us because um, he's going to start his own restaurant. He just sold his house yesterday, so he's, he's keeping the funds together to do that. Awesome. So, uh, 
It's going to be a vegan restaurant, which is oh, no. <laughs> pretty unique. But what I've been surprised at is how many cool is he a vegan? vegan foods there are. Not 100%, but he's getting, he's, he's, well, maybe we'll he very much him. believes in it. We'll have him on here because uh, I'm a carnivore oh, yeah. and we'll oh, have a little awesome. argument about the carnivore that, vegan thing. That'd be a lot, that'd be a fun <laughs> conversation. But, yeah. uh, anyway, we'll keep you posted on that and uh, where he's going to be at and all that. Well, I think that's. I think we pretty much hit everything that we uh, we wanted to. Frank and I talked about how much we talk all the time, anyway. So I'm not surprised that it went as long as it did. It's not. It's a. It's a great. That's oh how we gosh, want this podcast to be. Yeah, I know. Jeez. This is. This Sorry is, to take up. If anyone watched all of this, it's crazy. <laughs> a lot of your Saturdays. I so. think I'm not positive, but I think I see Denise on there. So. Oh my gosh. I think she's watching. That's um, dedication. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's her at the top up there with Tom. I see that part. Yeah, it's very hey, small. Denise, Tom. Yeah, yeah, what's up? If that's you, I'm pretty sure it is. I'll see you in a second. But um, yeah, anyway, so that's it. That's it for this podcast. Uh, this is episode number three um, with uh, Frank and Ruiz. And please go ahead and yeah, see it is Denise. I know it. I knew it. Denise, give me another thumbs up if that's you. I'm pretty sure I can see that far. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's a delay. Sounds messy. Um, but uh, anyway. Uh, if you, if you like this, if you think this is what you want to do, please DM me. I'd love to get some Treasure Valley businesses on here. This is Frank. He's, you know, obviously Blind Appeal is the first one. Um, I have four or five other people that we're looking towards working with who already know that I'd like to have them on the podcast. Um, and so really just DM me. Uh, check out our podcast right now. It's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, yep, it is, Denise. I told you there's another thumbs up. Yep. So it must be just a little delayed. Uh, but... You know, check it out, subscribe, listen, uh, share it with people. One of the things that I do sometimes with Lewis Howes' podcast is if you really liked it, screenshot it, make sure that it shows the episode number and all that stuff, and then post it on your social media so that people can see that so that it can get shared because we really want to build something that we can help other people build their businesses with. So um, please share it. Have a great day. Uh, thanks, Frank, for being here. Thank you. It's and, been uh, fun. Yeah. So have a good day.